He just doesn't know how to mix vocals and he's flat out broke. He spends countless hours on YouTube searching for the best vocal preset. Ooh, it's gonna be here somewhere. But he never finds one that fits his voice. Eventually he gives up and buys one from a website for $40. Apollo, the god of poetry, has known how to mix his vocals since 800 BC, forging the perfect vocal preset under the FL Studio tree. So when it got burnt down and all the knowledge was lost, he could teach it to future generations to come. I remember when I first tried to start mixing, it took me about three weeks in December to try and do it. So in this video, you're going to get a full mixing guide and also a guide on how to get so good at it that it comes to you like second nature. So in this, we're basically going to be creating a preset. Now, what is a preset? So it's a bunch of settings that are basically preset for you. So then you can make your vocal sound awesome. So recording in your bedroom is pretty hard. You've got a lot of reflective surfaces like the bed, your walls, everything is reflective. So there are two solutions for this. Either A, acoustically treat your room, put like soundproofing everywhere, maybe make your entire room a closet, do whatever. Or B, we can cut out all of the background noise in your vocals. So when the volume in your microphone drops past a certain amount, it will just cut the noise. And we're going to do that by using a noise gate. So what we're going to be doing firstly is we're going to be adding a fruity limiter to our vocal chain and then setting it on the noise gate preset. And then after we've done that, you'll see this knob on the side called the threshold. Now this is the amount of volume it takes for the effect to start kicking in. So if it was really high, you wouldn't hear anything because it's cutting out everything. But if it's really low, then it will only cut out the background noise. So we want to keep it as low as possible. But you've got to be careful because if you turn it up a bit too high, then your voice is going to sound like this. So now if I'm going something that sounds like this. I don't make a move, yeah, I don't even see. I was waiting for her. She waited on sounding me. like this. I don't make a move, yeah, I don't even see. I was waiting for her. She waited on me. It's a pretty good thing. Now, step two is EQ. So, essentially, there are parts of our voice that sound good and don't sound good. So, we want to boost the bits that sound good and basically remove the bits that don't sound good. Okay, and a lot of people think EQ is very complex, but it's actually really simple. We've basically got seven frequencies. And with these, we're going to boost the frequencies that sound good and we're going to reduce the frequencies that sound bad. For the first knob, we're basically going to take it and create a little curve with it. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the muddiness in the vocal so that then it doesn't sound as bassy anymore. So that then it won't clash with the bass frequencies that the beat might have or the 808s might have. But you need to make sure that you don't like curve it too much or else you're gonna end up sounding really tinny. At the other end of the spectrum for the seven, you basically want to boost it up to the five so that then it accentuates the higher frequencies. And when you do that, it sounds sick, watch. I don't make a move, yeah, I don't even see. I was waiting for her, she waited on me. So now after we've done that, what do we do with frequencies two to six? Well, essentially what you want to do is you want to sweep around for boxy frequencies, like hover above it and use like a little scroller wheel thing to then make it really narrow and then bring it upwards. And then after you've done that, you're basically going to play the vocal by itself and you're going to sort of like do, do this with the mouse until you hear something that sounds a bit like this. And then you're going to bring it down slightly. Confident. Bold and then we're gonna repeat that up until the sixth frequency. Bold now, next time I see you, I'll call ya. By your name, I ain't gonna play no games. I'll tell you straight that it's, it's not, not gonna, gonna be, be the same. same. I wanna be more than we are. You're thinking the same. Now there is no more reason for us to wait. And now after we've done that, we basically want to do that again. So we will duplicate the fruity parametric EQ2 and then do the entire process again. So curve, the other curve, and then the sweeping round of frequencies and then the dropping of them. And this process is basically called notch filtering. You're essentially just taking the bad frequencies and cutting them out. And now your vocals should have just a bit of a cleaner sound. So like this. I don't make a move, yeah, I don't even see. I was waiting for her, she waited on me. Hold up, wait a minute. Step three is the compressor. Basically, we want to increase the volume of the vocal without it clipping, basically distorting, because that sounds really bad to some people. So that's where a compressor comes in. It basically takes the loudest part of the vocals and the quietest part of the vocals, squishes them, so then you can raise the volume evenly without anything clipping. And there are three main settings that we need to adjust. One, the threshold. This is basically the volume level at which the compressor will activate. 
to the ratio, so it's how much the compressor squashes the audio when the threshold kicks in, and three is the gain. It's basically the volume adjustment made after the threshold and the ratio is applied. So if you go to the mixer, you'll basically see this like numbered bar, and if you play back the vocal, you'll see that the volume goes up to a certain amount. Now we want to translate that into negative values. So say for instance, if it was hovering at around 18, You'd, you'd set it to minus 18. And now for the ratio, I recommend somewhere in the region between four and eight. Because if you base, because if you turn the compressor all the way over, you're gonna lose that naturalness in the vocal. You're gonna lose the volume that it once had. And for the gain, I'd say it's up to you. I'd recommend from somewhere in the region from about zero to three, but it's up to you. Just do what sounds good. And now your vocal should have gone from this. I don't make a move. Yeah, I don't even see. I was waiting for her. She waited on me. To sounding like this. I don't make a move. Yeah, I don't even see. I was waiting for her. She waited on me. Now for step four, we need to remove all of the sibilance in the vocal because Sibilance can be really hard on the ears, so if you have someone saying slithery snake slided in the skittle or what, whatever, and you have that too much, it all just cuts through the eardrums and I, I, I don't know, it just sounds terrible. To remove that, basically what we're going to do is we're going to add a de -esser. So we're going to add the Maximus plugin and literally just put it on the de preset. And now that we've done all this dynamic processing, we basically want to enhance the vocal, so we want to make it sound a lot better. We, so we basically need a plugin that enhances clarity, warmth, and punch all at the same time. Introducing the sound good either. Now what's it do? Oh, oh, it makes it sound good. Nobody actually explains what this does. So I'm gonna do it quickly. It's basically compression and saturation combined together. So you've got more compression of the vocal to make it sound a bit louder. And then you've got the saturation added on top of that, which gives it a nice distorted feel and sometimes distortion like saturation can increase the clarity of the vocal so what i recommend on this is either the a preset if you're doing more rap drill type stuff or the c preset if you're doing more singing type stuff and this makes a massive difference because now your vocal is gonna go from sounding like this a boring vocal i don't make a move yeah i don't even see i was waiting for her to sounding like this she waited on me hold up wait a minute all our love is finished Cause I didn't make a move Left it too late Waiting for you Left it to fate And I admit And I that's such a tremendous difference But now that we've boosted a bunch of parts in the vocal There are going to be like subtle imperfections in the vocal that we want to mask So for step 6 we're going to add a fruity reverb too So reverb makes the vocal sound like it's in a room And it gives it a lot more space And just like the previous plugin it makes it sound good So essentially you just want to add it on the default preset And then on the channel you'll have these other grey knobs and you just want to twist it back to around quarter way and just fiddle around with it until it sounds good <laughs> and to further simulate the space we need to give the vocal some echo so that's where the delay comes in basically you want to put the fruity delay 3 to the ping pong preset so that then the echo goes left and right and it sounds really 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 cool and then you adjust the time to about halfway and now with these two things combined the vocal should have gone from sounding like this I don't make a move yeah I don't even see to sounding like this I don't make a move yeah I don't even see I was waiting for her she waited on me hold up wait a minute all our love is finished cause I didn't make a move left it too late waiting for you left it to fate and I admit I made that mistake 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 Than people, all the people with short attention spans have clicked off, so now it's time for the unfiltered section. Now, welcome to part two, where I'm going to be explaining how to actually practice this properly and how to get so good at it that you don't need to think about it anymore. So, in the best case scenario, your brain needs about 18 days to make something a habit, and once it becomes a habit, you will be so far ahead of everyone else. And so, this is my four step method in order to become a god at mixing. So, the first thing is mix vocals first thing in the morning when your brain's the freshest. Find a vocal online, like type in an artist's name, then raw vocals after it so it could be juice bowl raw vocals. Step three is to mix as many of these as possible. And four is to keep it on a habit tracker. You can basically just take a piece of paper, make a little like grid with boxes, and then just stick it up on your wall somewhere. Imagine you could create like your own XP bar, but in real life. So to get really good at talking on camera, what I did is I stuck I stuck a piece of paper up on my wall 
with like level one at the start of the bar and level 50 at the end of the bar. And for every day that I completed this habit of speaking on camera, I would tick it off and I would feel so good because it's like I'm programming my brain with something that was already familiar to it. And there are a lot of people that are going to watch this tutorial but not many will succeed. I know you'll succeed because you've watched the full tutorial. Yeah, props to you. Bro. I know that sounds so cliche, but I genuinely want that for the both of us. So there's a Discord community link below for people like us, basically helping people make music and all that stuff. So if you want it, it's down there. Keep working hard and I will see you at the top.